Welcome back to Master Data Management 1. In the previous video, you learned about the second step in the MDM lifecycle, deploy. You also deployed your contact model into your contact repository. In this video, we're going to take the next step in the deploy process, which is setting up our sources. Once you're done creating your sources and populating the name and source IDs, you're ready to start attaching them to a model. When you attach a source to a model, you're essentially attaching them to a particular domain. They represent the systems contributing data to that domain or accepting updates from them. Most sources are configured to both contribute data and accept updates of data. Some common exceptions include data warehouses, spreadsheets, and web forms. Data warehouses are commonly designated as non-contributing sources, meaning MDM is only able to send updates, creates, or delete requests, whereas the warehouse is not permitted to connect to the MDM repository. This gives you greater control over the security and accuracy of your data, since you can allow your trusted sources to change data in the MDM repository, while the sources that could have outdated data cannot. Spreadsheets and web forms are commonly designated as contribute-only sources, meaning they're only able to create update requests within your MDM repository, but not actually able to accept any responses. In our example, we said that the MySQL database is actually our trusted source, so for that reason, we do not want to allow it to be corrupt by the incorrect data in Salesforce. That means the MySQL source will only be allowed to contribute data to the contact repository, but not accept any updates from it. Now that we've discussed how our sources will work within the business use case, let's take a look at how we can actually attach our sources to our contact model. It can be tricky navigating MDM at first due to its stacked structure. When attaching a source to a model, we need to go back to the Repositories tab and enter the repository itself. Since we do not want to edit the model itself, but rather just attach the sources to the model, this is all done within the repository. The way we can get there is by clicking on the Repository tab, then selecting the desired repository, and clicking on the Contact Model from the list on the left side of the screen. Finally, you can click on the Sources sub-tab, which will take you to the desired screen. As we can see here, before we attach our first source, we're given a brief description and a large green attach button. This will bring up our attach a source window that will allow you to configure the source's permissions. You can toggle these options for a given source at any time. Source name will allow you to select the source you'd like to attach from a drop down menu. Once a source is attached, it will no longer appear in the source name drop down menu for this model within this repository. The This Source Can option allows you to designate whether you want the source to contribute data, accept channel updates, or do both. Remember, contribute means that data can flow from the source to the MDM repository, and accept means that data can flow from the MDM repository to the source. The channel update options will either be all fields or changed fields only. All fields will send the entire golden record out to the source system when a change is made. Changed fields only will only send the fields that actually changed out to the source systems. Once the source is attached to the model, you will have many options to configure the data coming into and going out of your repository. You can access a special configuration window by clicking on the action icon located to the left of your source name. From this window, you have several options that you can use to customize the permissions each attached source has. One thing to keep in mind is that the permissions you set up here only affect this source for this model within this repository. This means you can attach the same source to a different model in a different repository and give it completely different permissions. We can see at the top of this window you can set specific approval requirements based off of the new records, updates, and end date record. This will make sure that if any records fall into one of those categories, they will be immediately sent to a separate area that will need manual verification by the data steward. You will also have the ability to set special approval conditions for each field within the model. This gives you complete control over where your data goes and who can see your data. We will cover these options in more detail during the demonstration. Now it's time for me to demonstrate exercise number nine, where I will attach our two sources to our contact model and go over some of the configuration options available to us. Feel free to follow along in the activity guide and you'll have plenty of time to complete this on your own after the video. 
Now, if you remember, we left off on the Sources tab within the MDM platform. So we're going to need to navigate to the correct area before we can attach our sources to our contact model. Since our contact model is deployed to our contact repository, we will need to go into the repository first and then into our contact model to attach the sources. Start by clicking on the Repositories tab located in the upper left side of the screen. Then select the contact repository. From here, we can access the contact model by clicking on it, located on the far left side of the screen. Now that we are in the contact model, we need to click on the sources sub tab located in the upper middle part of the screen. As you can see, we don't have any of our sources configured or attached yet. So to attach our first source, we can simply click on the large green button here that says attach a source. Once you click that, a new window will appear from the top of the screen, which will allow you to select which source you want to attach, whether it can contribute or accept channel updates, and what channel updates can contain. We're going to start with the MySQL source to attach first. If you remember from our business use case, we only want our MySQL source to contribute data. So what we'll do is click on the node next to contribute data. You may notice that since it cannot accept channel updates, the next option disappears. From here, you can simply click save to attach the MySQL source. Now that our MySQL source is attached, we need to attach our SFDC source. So go ahead and click on the green attach a source button once again, and you'll see the source name now contains SFDC. And for the permissions, we want to allow for both. Now, since this can accept channel updates, the option to show what the updates contain appears over here beneath the this sources can option. From here, if, we, if you'd like, you can go ahead and click on the drop down menu and see that it says all fields or changed fields only. So you can select either of these options. However, for our training purposes, we want to keep all fields active rather than just the changed fields only. So we're going to go ahead and then click on save once you are done with that. If you remember from our slides, you can set specific permissions per source. You can do so by clicking on the actions icon to the left of the source name. This is going to bring up a small drop down menu with three different options. As we can see, we have configure, enable initial load, and remove source. If I click on the configure option, it's going to open up a new window that flies in from the right side of the screen. Here I have two sets of permissions I can put into place for my MySQL source. At the top, we have the record level options, and these options look at a record in its entirety. It makes a decision based off of what it sees. If the first box is checked, it will send any record that is not an update to a current golden record to the quarantine area. This is what the require approval for new records does. Now this determination is actually based upon the match rules that you set within your model. Now the quarantine area is a place for any records that need individual attention from the data steward, and they will need to be investigated and manually accepted or rejected. The second option on the record level options would require approval for updates to any fields, which means that if any field within the new record would update an existing golden record, it would then be sent to the quarantine zone for manual approval. And finally, the third option, if checked, would require manual approval from the data steward if any records are sent to MDM that are end dated. Now for the MySQL source, we're actually going to keep all three of these unchecked, so you can go ahead and uncheck those now. Within the field level options area, we can choose to include or exclude any of the fields for a particular source within a particular model. This can be very useful if you need to collect sensitive information that must be included in the golden record, but cannot be shared with a specific source. You can easily select the exclude node here, which will disable that field from interacting with that particular source. You can also require approval updates on a field by field basis by selecting the node in the middle column for any field. And finally, you can even create a custom rule per field, and you can do so by clicking underneath the custom column. The logic works much like the business rule shape, and it allows you to automatically exclude or require approvals if certain circumstances arise. As you can see, your ability to master your data is only limited by your own creativity. 
I'm going to set these settings back to the default for the MySQL source and return these back to include. But feel free to explore the options available when you try this exercise on your own. Now, the last thing we want to do is to add some record level settings for the SFDC source. This will force any records coming from Salesforce to require manual approval from us. This way, if it has incorrect data, we can verify it first to keep it from corrupting our golden records. We can do so by clicking on the actions icon here, clicking on configure, and then simply clicking on the top two options within the record level options. Simply go to the bottom and click save, and your sources now have been saved to your contact model. So now it's your turn to try it on your own. Once you've completed exercise number nine, you may start the next video.